Have you ever played a class in TF2 before? Let's try that again. Have you ever played a class in TF2 because you think they're good on the map you're playing on before? There we go, that's better. Like if you're on Upward, for example, and you specifically pick Soldier because it's fun to do rocket jumping rollouts, or maybe you just did really well as Soldier last time and wanted to replicate that in another game. Right? Which if you do relate to something like that, then your answer to my previous question would probably be yes. It's true that with the amount of maps in the game, there are always going to be ones that will favor specific classes and make them really shine. Which is why I decided to take a deep dive into TF2's extensive map pool, with the goal of finding what I think is the objectively best map for each class in the game. Looking for the ones that make connections such as playing into the strengths of what makes a particular class strong, minimizing their common weaknesses allowing them to be more effective for longer, and adhering to the class's different playstyles, so that not only is the class good on the map, but they're also unrestricted. So with those concepts in mind, and a lot of research, I like to think that I was able to come up with some pretty reasonable picks. But then again, there's over a hundred maps in the game, so uh, who really knows? That said, here is what I think is every class's objectively best map. Play ball! Scout is a class who works best on the flank, allowing him to move around enemies quickly, and to me, there are very few maps that provide Scout better flanking potential than Peer. While choosing a payload map for Scout seems a little rough-edged at first considering how games usually go for the class. <laughs> Peer utilizes a layout that is extremely different compared to other payload maps for various reasons. Firstly, the map uses elevation a lot, creating different upper and lower areas, making it very difficult to lock out every angle with a singular sentry gun, which is a very much needed attribute to work around Scout's biggest counter. Peer is also a map that rarely leaves one straightforward path players can walk along to attack or defend an objective, which gives you a bunch of free space to work around, allowing for Scout to take advantage, being one of the best single target pick classes in the game. Another unique component of Pier that I like is just how much this map uses water. Having it across the entirety of different areas, which although is usually just seen as a buff for a force completely unrelated to Scout, water is one of the most underrated flanking tools in TF2, allowing you to swim throughout it without the risk of being seen by the active shooters above. And when you have so many different ways to freely flank around your enemies, you begin to see why I picked Pier in the first place, because it essentially becomes a Scout sand box experience, where you can go wherever you want to go, getting into encounters against enemies divided from their team, which is why I think I seem to enjoy them so much more here. <laughs> Soldier was a very easy pick for me, not only because he's one of the most well-rounded classes in the game, but also because there's one map in particular where Soldier seems to have quite a large influence on. And no, it's not Hightower. Well, yes, it is the certified official soldiering map. You also gotta keep in mind that your average Hightower game looks a lot like this. Now, the map that I really picked, as some of you might have already guessed, is actually Thunder Mountain. Since every time you play on this map, you'll always run into that one competitive participation, top 25 highest ranked UG GC only uses the original Soldier player. And there's a good reason for that too. Soldier is a high damage and high mobility class who can rocket jump between different areas dealing damage to those below him, and Thunder Mountain plays into that very nicely with how easily accessible the high ground is, and all of the three playable areas having high skybox ceilings, which makes his mobility in specific very good. There are very few other classes too who can contest against your movement, allowing you to dive bomb your enemies quickly and get away with your last rocket for free. Another thing which ended up being a huge factor to why I picked Thunder Mountain over other maps is that the map has health pack spawns everywhere. Like in the final area where a soldier can choose between one of three different health packs all within the range of a rocket jump or two. Now this is a very underlooked part of a map that soldier needs because rocket jumping does inflict self damage or at least it usually does. And being able to constantly be near some sort of sustainability like that no matter where you are on the map allows you to stay mobile. Even for those who don't know how to rocket jump though, the map still makes Soldier easier since you could spam your rockets from height, which is something that comes naturally because the design of the map consistently promotes that, so if you enjoy rocket jumping on a map that actually has a common objective, or even if you just like playing Soldier, Thunder Mountain is and has always been the map for you. And yes, that means you too, gangsterlish. <laughs> Pyro was a bit of a tricky one, since he needed a map that wasn't too open, so he wasn't constantly being outranged by other classes, but also one that's not too closed, since, well, uh... 
So I landed on the map Crit, which to me is the perfect middle ground for a pyro. The map basically paces itself through a bunch of smaller, decently sized areas, with a bunch of corridors that can be used to corner fire his shotguns and flare guns, or to keep hidden behind so they can trap enemies into their flames that pass by. The amount of cover this map provides is also good to support pyros in closing the distance from his enemies. And although the best flank route in the map is entirely filled with water, meaning you could be caught without being able to use your fire-based weapons, you can also still make pretty quick work of enemies using a shotgun or actually finding use for the Neon Annihilator. This map has pretty much everything that a pyro player could ask for, which is why I think it's his best. I mean, come on, it even has a funny environmental hazard. Demo Man, for most people, would imagine that one of his best maps would be something extremely enclosed, like Dust Bowl, where he can spam his grenades and sticky bombs from narrow corridor to narrow corridor and just rack up high amounts of easy kills. The problem of calling it his best map is that switching to his other weapons or playstyles, like Hybrid Knight or Demo Knight, will significantly hinder him because you have less explosives to work with. So really, his best map would actually be something that balances for his movement-based playstyle styles to function a lot better, which is where the map Egypt comes in. Egypt hardly restricts you from playing the class in a certain way, since it designs itself by featuring several areas with one of two concepts. Either parts of the map that are vertically huge, with buildings that a demo man could sticky jump and trimp up to, or enclosed caves and arches which are perfect for those who still want to take advantage of demo man's spamming capability. The map also has these giant spawn doors as well, which are good for those who like to flank out the gate, with quickly sticky jumping up to or behind enemy lines. And that is why Egypt to me is his best map. Not because he can get the most kills on the map, but because he can be the most versatile on it. Heavy is a class with the potential to have a very strong presence in a round, assuming certain conditions are met. Which is what Viaduct does for him. Most people know by now that Heavy being the slowest class in the game happens to have a lot of problems that stem from that. Such as him being prone for giving snipers something to shoot at, or the need of a teammate teleporter on some maps because because walking back to the fight all the way from spawn as a heavy is the equivalent of quadrupling your respawn time. So since not everyone's gonna be playing engineer for you, Viaduct becomes a very nice fix to these issues, with tons of balanced natural cover making sniper sightlines much easier to avoid, and also because of the fact that it only takes about, uh... 12 seconds for him to reach the middle point, which is pretty good for the big man. Heavy being one of the best area denial options in the game as well, pays off on Viaduct because of the closed entryways, making enemies have to tackle your stream of minigun fire head on, and since there aren't really any flank routes on the map, it is a lot easier for Heavy to block things out, and keeping account of where enemy spies might be. And if you really wanted to play Fat Scout for any reason on this map, it works pretty well here too, so go for it. Cowboy! Engineer's map, while well, it might not be the pick that a lot of people agree with, to me, it's gotta be Frontier. Now, this is a class whose contribution to a team typically comes from his ability to maintain his buildings and build them in good places. And there are very few maps that compete with how creative Frontier allows you to be when it comes to that. Whether it's to be upfront and offensive by using sneaky higher up sentry spots that very few people would expect, or keeping your buildings hidden by slowly making space through the side rooms and moving your nest behind the enemy, or just playing the class regularly, which with all the flank routes and previously mentioned side rooms challenges you to play the class as proactively as possible, which is a really good way to eventually learn how to better position yourself and your building. The amount of unique interactions on Frontier, for example, using the giant cart as cover for better placements, and how good engineering is because of the insane places that you can put teleporters okay, maybe not that insane, is why I almost always play this class whenever I find myself on this map. Medic was a very challenging class to pick a best map for, mainly because he's the only one who's pretty much good to have on any map. But I suppose there are some points about Medic that make some maps stand out more than others, which is why I ended up on Altitude. Allow me to explain. As a Medic, your primary goal is to heal and support your team, but maps which are entirely open and mainly promote flanking, or ones with too many different levels of elevation, can separate your team, making it harder for a single Medic to heal everyone, which often has you run into those moments where your team like, uh, yo, why didn't you heal me while I was fighting 500,000 miles away from you? Like, are you trolling, medic? <laughs> 
So in the conversation of altitude, while it is a very open map, it's still very good for medics specifically because of two reasons. Firstly is how the map uses elevation. By not adding different levels into an area dividing you from your team, but instead using slopes that divide the attacking and defending side, which gives you free cover on snipers who are on opposite sides of the hill on the first point, and really everywhere into the second point. The second reason is when things do inevitably go down and your team does eventually get absolutely destroyed. On altitude, it never really feels like you're backed into a corner when the rest of your team is dead, and that there's always a lot of empty space behind the points that Medic can quickly retreat to. While yes, there are other maps that provide these kind of design concepts, I chose altitude specifically because outside of Medic, there isn't really a particular class which really shines or dominates on this map. And a map that's balanced like that definitely supports being able to play Medic more effectively. Get to it! Sniper, on the other hand, is quite straightforward. If the map has good sight lines, then he is good on that map. Now, while there are some maps with the occasional absolute abomination of a sight line, like the one you see here on Camber, I think the best bet is choosing a map like Upper, because it just has good sight lines all over the place. I mean, really though, on each point, there is always going to be somewhere that a sniper can stand, whether if it is conventional or isn't at all, that allows him to see a vast amount of the open field. Not to mention how very little cover upward has when you're not playing around the indoor parts of the map. Even on point D, when the map is meant to be less friendly to the class, it still gives enough horizontal space to pick off a few enemies without even being challenged. Because again, zero cover. I think the only thing that makes Sniper not borderline broken on this map is that they usually spend most of their time shooting at other people playing Sniper. Which makes sense, because when there's a map that features sightlines like this throughout the entirety of its playable area, why wouldn't you play Sniper on it? Gentlemen. Spy being the final class on this list was actually a bit difficult to pick a map for. He's the only one who doesn't really apply to being better on a certain map, but rather the opportunities in a team fight that he's placed in. Spy isn't really better if he's on bad water or two forts, so I guess his best map would be one where these opportunities are a lot more common, which in my opinion would be probably on a king of the hill map like Harvest. The reason king of the hill specifically is a strong mode for Spy is it's the one you most commonly see teams play separate from each other because of its more deathmatch based environment, then you include a map like Harvest which has everything a spy needs to work himself into a position for good stabs. It adheres to the newer spy players from the easy to follow layout, and the advanced spy players with the many different levels of high ground to jump off of everywhere for high trick stabbing potential, and really any spy in between because of the good amount of ammo box spawns which can be used to efficiently refill cloak. It's a solid map to practice or master the class, which for a very interchangeable class like the spy, I think at least is exactly exactly what you want. With all that said though, that is what I think is the best map for each class in TF2. Now while I am expecting to be a bit flamed for some of my picks, again it's important to note that this video is of course one I made based off my own opinion, rather than trying to tell you that these are their definitively best maps. I would love to see though what you think is the best map for each class, or really just a map that you happen to play a specific class on very often, so feel free to let me know what you think in the comments below. But other than that, thank you for all the recent support on my TF2 related content. I really do appreciate it, and I will see you all in the next silly little video I make. Buh bye bye